right, welcome to another edition of Breadwinning Women. I am super pumped for today's episode because I have an amazing guest, Cynthia Stant, who is a self-made millionaire sales consultant to seven-figure CEOs. She's an energetic embodiment coach, mindset coach for powerful executive and entrepreneur women and a spiritual success mentor to women leaders. She's a real estate investor and performance coach for women who are truly ready to get it done and see it through. Cynthia has created amazing results in her business over the last uh, year, which I'm super excited for her to jump in and share her story. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Breadwinning Women, Cynthia. So excited to have this conversation with you today. Hey, Jamila, I am too. Thank you so much for having me. It's definitely be a good time. Yes. So I want to really start out with um, talking about what does it mean, right, to be an energetic embodiment coach. So take people into, you know, the the behind the scenes of what you do and like the kind of um, person that can benefit from your work? Yeah. So I have been an executive woman since the age of 23. I was, I remember I had 13 interviews <laughs> and I became the youngest state portfolio manager in the world for Jim Beam brands. And I was one of four women, extremely masculine because I mean, we're selling bourbon here. You know what I mean? So um, I'm managing a sales team of 42 people. Almost every single one of them had children my age. Um, I'm dealing a lot with, you know, predominantly men, salesmen, and under my management, we're forecasting, we're budgeting, I'm giving tools to the salespeople to hit their, their goals, I'm making the relationships, but after doing this, and lots of tears, and getting my head handed to me, and crying in my, like, office with nobody knowing, I was able to get my team to be number one in the nation for sales two years in a row, so I realized, being a metaphysical woman, because when I had some time, which wasn't very often, I would constantly be studying. This studying, this interest actually brought me to the College of Metaphysical Studies, where I really started to learn about everything you cannot see. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And I realized after learning about universal concepts and really building my relationship with the unknown, um, that I started to progress in my sales. Everything started getting better and better. And so what's interesting is after I left that position and I ended up working for a very successful online business consultant, I realized that we were just go, go, going and do, do, doing. And although we were crushing it, a lot of her clients were coming in as well. And we're just do, do, doing, go, go, going, do, do, doing. So the thing is when we go, go and we do, do, that's amazing. But that just means that we're working with the physical realm. We're so much more than what we can see. In fact, we're so much more than just physical bodies. We really are energetic bodies. Now, I like to get extra woo-woo with it, which I know is not for everybody, but I'll even say that, you know, I believe that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But what's interesting is I realized that, you know, it's not just what you do that matters. What you do is extremely important. We know that that's what you're teaching, the systems, the strategies that, you know, having the support to do that, those are important, but it's not just what you do. It's who you are when you do it. Now, a lot of the time in the metaphysical world or a lot of the self-help or even just this big word of manifestation right now, people focus a lot on mindset, which is key. People are talking about, if you think it, it'll come to you. That's how you attract it. But that is a part of it. But thinking and mindset is just a, a portion of the full formula. Mm. So there really is, when it comes to energetics, a, a formula for success. It's aligned thoughts plus aligned feelings plus aligned actions equal aligned results. And it's funny, my husband's my best friend, but he'll also be the first person to question me and then, you know, shake me with love and, you know, all the things, but he heard me saying this before. And he's like, why do you have to say aligned all the time? That just seems like extra. He's like, can't you say thoughts, feelings, actions, get results. And I said, yeah, they do. You're right. But poverty is a result. Illness is a result. A failed business is a result. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for aligned results. So Taking aligned thoughts, feelings, and actions get us that aligned result. So what that means is, and this is a really big concept, but 
just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Think of like gravity, for instance. If I'm holding a pen and I let it go, we know it's not going to float away. It's going to fall each and every time. And just because you can't see gravity, you do see how it affects the pen. Now we've learned how to work with gravity, especially those of us who've fallen on our face before, we yes. realize <laughs> how to pivot and perhaps not do that again. So the thing is, when we are considering how things come to manifestation, it's not just the physical. In fact, everything that you see in the physical right now isn't who you are, it's who you were. Your past feelings, thoughts, and actions got you to where you're at now. So everything in the physical, if you don't like it, you can change it, but it has to start in different realms, different dimensions, which actually then would be the mental realm and the spiritual realm. So if you are in the spiritual realm, this is where everything is 100% potentiality, 100% possible. You cannot, and then you're brilliant, I'm brilliant, our, our listeners are brilliant, but even as amazing and you know smart as we are, we can't even fathom what is possible out there. Like our 5% conscious minds can't even think about what's in the spiritual, but when something comes into the mental, this is in your imagination. Disney always says, if you can dream it, you can do it. Picasso says, if you can imagine it, it's real. How else are you experiencing it? If it's not real, it's just not here in the physical yet. So this is where you're working with your mindset, your mindset, but what happens next? What a lot of people are missing on really getting the results that they're looking for and manifesting things into the physical is they're not taking the next step of bringing the things from the mental into the physical, which means that you have to bring the energy from your mind into your body. Mm -hmm. So embody the aligned result. And this is what I help women to do. Um, my brand is called Inner Feminine Beast. And your Inner Feminine Beast is the version of you that has the clarity, the power, the strength and the certainty to get it done and see it through. And so it's really being her now, embodying her to live the life that she lives. Mm. That's <laughs> okay. okay, I love that. So I, and, and I think that, you know, as women that are building businesses that allow us to be high earners, we are often in our minds, yeah. the actions. It's always the how, what, what do I need to be doing today? What, what's the to-do list? Like how do I get these actions done? And what I have noticed with our clients and community is that there are a lot of cases where they're thinking and the way that they're showing up and even what they're putting out in the world in terms of what they're speaking life to are actually the things that are holding them back. So for example, I was speaking with a client the other day and she was like, well, I don't want this and I don't want that and I don't want this and I don't want that. And I was like, girl, you just bringing in more what you don't want. Like that's exactly. all you, right? Like that's all you keep saying. And, and, and every time I talk to you, you got more of the thing you said you didn't want last week. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, so how Cynthia help us out here, right. Who we were like really in our heads. Right. And, and, and spitting off these things that we don't even know that are, you know, going out into the universe and creating results. How do we begin to create alignment to our goals like what what should we be thinking about or doing to start to make that happen yes yeah, so many things here so 100 life is a boomerang game whatever you put out there you certainly get back your words are very powerful your words are vibration that create a frequency that affect everything around you and so i call that like positively charging because you're completely correct we always accidentally focus on the things we don't want by saying like, for instance, I really don't want to be late versus saying I enjoy being on time. Yeah. The universe is very, very literal. It just hears what you're saying and not yeah. necessarily. So we actually self-sabotage a lot of the times, but at the same time, what it really is when it's, it's looking to get the results you're looking for and beginning, <laughs> here's the thing. You said something, I want to make sure I focus on it. We said, how do we do the things? How do we get out of our heads? I have talked to so many successful women because I enjoy having connection calls. I love meeting people all over the world. Some of my best friends I've met through connection calls. You and I, we connected through connection calls. But I have talked to so many women and they have said, you know, Cynthia, I'm not quite sure how I was going to do the thing. And then once I did it, 
I still don't know how I got it done. Mm. And I realized when I had my very first $70,000 cash month in my eighth month, of my business, I had no idea how it happened. I did all these things. I was going to sell this and I was going to do this and I was going to do that. And I was going to do this. And I did all those things, but nothing works. And all of a sudden it still came. Yes. Because what it is, is working with the end result. So think about when I say your inner feminine beast, you might have a different name for her. You may call her your higher self. Um, some people might even say Holy Spirit, like w- labeling, call it whatever you like. But for me, inner feminine beast, to me, I believe that we're not just CEOs of our business. We are the CEO of our lives. Mm-hmm. And for us to be the CEO, it means that we're the visionaries. We're the shock colors. I like to say that we're the directors of this film that we get to, to live. We, we literally call the shots. We, we hire the actors. We fire the actors. For us, though, that means that we have to be looking down on the maze and not stuck in it day to day. When we are like wearing where that next sale is coming from or what's the next thing I'm going to create or what's the next podcast idea or, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do to balance the kid life work, all that you're stuck in the maze. But here's what's really cool. When you really study science and physics and, and listen to like Albert Einstein, for instance, nothing's created, nothing's destroyed. The highest version of you, your inner fun of beast doesn't have to be created. That's like the most amazing thing to me is that it, she already exists. So the, mm-hmm. everything that you desire doesn't have to be created. It just needs to be aligned. And so our job is to get clarity on what it is that we desire and then align with it. So I was thinking about this actually the other day, if you think about it, if you tune into a radio station and let's just say this is your favorite radio station, which I don't know if anybody actually does that anymore when you sit in your car, cause we all have like Pandora and podcasts. <laughs> right? Right. Now, let's, let's say this is FM. Okay. You turn it on and you adjust and you get into your station and on your station, it's by the way, through radio waves, those things you cannot see, but somehow you can hear the voice of somebody across the country because it's traveling. Anyway, you get into this radio station, all of a sudden you just love everything about it. You love that they play your jams. They know, they know your favorite tunes. You're obsessed with the, the host. You feel like you know all of them as your best friends. They even sell to you the stuff that you want to buy. Keep giving me those ads. Like they're made for me. Yes, they want to buy this. Well, what happens is if you end up changing the station and it's on a completely different station, let's say it's country. Now I like country, so that's why I can pick on it. But let's say you don't like country. If you're on this station now, it's going to be talking about, you know, songs you don't like. There's going to be banjo in the background. They're going to be talking about advertising you to the local rodeo. They're going to be talking about dogs and bourbon. And you're like, oh my God, I don't like any of this. I don't get these jokes. It's not enjoyable. Well, the thing is, whose fault is that? What what are you going to do about it? The interesting thing is your station that you love, where everything is coming in and receiving is still there. You're just not tuned into it. So if you don't like where you're at, you need to take that action to change and pivot it to align to where you want it to be on that frequency. That's the same thing with, if you're not enjoying the life right now, who are you? Who do you want to be? And what's the difference? The difference is taking that action. So it's all about knowing the end result. And the funny part is most of us don't even know what we want. Like, how do we know what we want? And the most important part is why do we want it? A lot of people say, I want to make a million dollars in my business. Great. But the thing is, if you're not fueling it with the why, it's not going to get anywhere. So it's really understanding that we need to have clarity on what the end result is. And so that kind of is your question (laughs) is how do we figure out what it is that we want? It's a lot of giving yourself permission to imagine, giving yourself permission to play with curiosity, to let go of judgment to train your brain to control your thoughts so your thoughts aren't controlling you. It's about having a spiritual practice. And again, remembering that you're a spiritual being having a human experience. So really making sure that you constantly are dumping the things that just come to you without judging it. Because I really do believe for us to get more downloads, we got to clear our brain, put it on paper in order to get more of that receptivity. But then it's thinking about if this is what I want at the end, how would I get there? So this is very much, I think, like what you teach with the goal setting. When I was given, you know, in sales, a budget, um, or I had hit a goal of $5 million in one product, I automatically would go higher than what they told me, right? Because I wouldn't sit there and say, okay, guys, all right, we have to hit 5 million. Let's do our best. Let's see how it goes. 
let's try, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, I'm fired and so is my whole team if we don't hit that. So I automatically make sure we go over. So we have some buffer because what if something goes wrong, which it always does. And then really think like, okay, if this is the end, what does that mean I have to do per quarter? What does that mean I have to do per month? What does that mean we have to do per week? Do we have the tool set up there? If something goes wrong, are we able to pivot? Are we able to you know, go around and not have things derail us? So once you figure out what the end is, you then work backwards. That is the best way to figure out how to move forwards because you're going to do something you've never done before. That's the only way to experience growth is to do things you haven't done. But if you don't know what those things are, start with the end and ask yourself, how, if I'm here now, did I get here? Right. And that's how you kind of look at it. Okay. Love that. So I love the, you know, the practice that you do, I think is a good way to kind of get into that imagination and also get clear when you talk about your monthly vision boards, yeah, share, yeah, share a little bit about that. I think that's like a way that someone can actually put this into practice. Mm, this is so funny. So I work with um, a lot of multi seven figure women and their sales teams, and um, every one of my salespeople, every one of my employees. Even if before this, if I was your manager, I made you do what I refer to as a monthly vision board. So what happens is is a lot of us have heard of vision boards and we tend to make them very grand. We put like our whole year on there or even our whole life. Like the wall of China is not big enough. I feel like for my whole life vision board. Okay. But the thing is, what is important is to really sit down and think, what is it I want to achieve in this next month? And mm -hmm. sometimes you do three months, but I like to challenge myself. Because if your goals aren't big enough, and if they, I mean, if they don't scare you, they're not big enough. So what do you think feels like three months out? I want to put that on our vision board for this month. And what it is, is you really in the middle of this vision board, put something that's your why, because something's going to go wrong. You would have had achieved this goal already if something didn't already go wrong. What has kept you from doing it? So when it gets hard and when things get challenging, what is your why to keep you going? to help you to be persistent. You put that right in the middle of your board to remind you every single day. Then you put on the other parts, visual ways of you being the end result of this goal. So when you sit down daily, the very first thing you do is look at this and be in the feeling of the woman who has this. Think as the woman who has this. Because I can tell you, working with thousands of entrepreneurs, I can tell the difference between somebody just doing the thing versus being aligned when they do it. For instance, if you're somebody that has 500 DMs that you have to send today, which I've literally done for years of my life, instead of going like this, <laughs> doing it and saying, I am a woman who has changed the life of people. I literally sit there every day and say, whose life am I going to change? And where's my money at? <laughs> because when I get it, I'm allowed to receive. And I think about the people I'm going to impact. I think about the changes I'm going to make. And I feel great that I am the start of people's success. I feel great that I'm doing the universe and God's work. I feel great that I am, you know, really being noticed and attracting these people. So it's not what I do. It's the energy behind it. So before I do anything that's on my board, I sit there and get in the vibe of it. And then on my to-do list, I sit there and say the top Thing, the very first thing I'm going to do today is going to help me to move forward on one of the things on my goals. The thing is, a lot of times, especially people who are newer to disciplining themselves or getting results or for hitting goals, the thing they tend to do is balance. They're like, everybody hears, oh, live a balanced life. No, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Balancing yeah. is for masters. When you're new, you don't want to balance. You want to learn how to really discipline yourself to focus. And so it's like juggling, like you don't start with three balls. Nobody does that. You start with one, just as so you can do it Two to make sure you get the feel of it. And then three, once you get there, there's a huge difference between one and two and two and three. So one thing on your board, you start with, and every day you take steps forward to make sure that you're doing that thing. And you do that thing first, because we all know if you wait to the end of the day, something comes up, your right. kids are sick. Your husband wants to go to happy hour. You're not going to say no. You know, you want to like, whatever it is, you do that thing first. Every day counts. Every day matters. And the thing is, when you show up as her, magic and miracles are on your side. You don't yeah. need to know the how. Again, your conscious mind can't understand the 95% subconscious of you. 
You don't need to know the how, you just show up as the end result and you attract that end result. You think like her, you act like her, you feel like her, you invest like her, you dress like her, you, you do the things like her, and then you get to live the life she does. So it's all about seeing and feeling the end result as you do everything that you do, knowing what steps to take and being the energy of it. That's how your vision board works. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Let's talk about it from a, because you've applied this, right? In your, um, in your own business and, mm-hmm. you know, four months was able to get to six figures within eight months, had a 70 K cash collected month, you know, take us, you know, behind the scenes of your day to day. And what were some of your, you know, align action how were you backwards planning like did you say to yourself like yeah I'm gonna hit six figures in four months or were you thinking like listen if I hit six figures in 12 I'll be cool but you were so aligned that you just got to it in four like take us behind the scenes of what that first um 12 months for you in business has been like so in the beginning 100% I will tell you I was definitely money driven Um, so I was fired from my position and I was having a pretty cushy, you know, commission at that point. So I was like, one, I'm not going to do this for anybody else like ever again. And two, how can I get to where I was at for a while? And so I was very number driven. What happens though, is once you start hitting your numbers and financially you start having, you know, being able to manifest all the things that you want in the physical it really, my boards have changed completely now to qualities and things I would like intangibly to manifest. Uh, that has completely shifted, but this is what happened. So first of all, as I go over this, one thing I know you're probably thinking about me is, wow, this lady is like straight up drill sergeant. She's a boot camp kind of girl. Like she seems way too focused and like disciplined and strict for me though. Discipline is not controlling. It's not punishment. It truly is freedom. And so what happens is people will say, wow, you're just go, go, go. You get so much done a day. You don't stop. You don't breathe. Do you? I'm like, no, that's not actually how it works. But I've, I've, I've worked on the muscle of my mind. I've been able to hyperspeed results and condense time because I understand the power of focus, wherever the focus goes is where the momentum goes. And because the law of inertia, what goes in motion stays in motion. So I work with motion. I work with universal law, but here's the thing. I'm so focused and disciplined that when I'm working, oh, I'm getting it done. I'm working, but when I'm having fun, I have more fun than anybody because I turn off those. I'd have those boundaries where I'm with you. I'm dialed in. I just went to a five day girlfriend trip with, um, for my birthday last week. I didn't pick my phone up once other than talk to my husband for a few minutes here and there, you know, I'm going away in two weeks for my 10 year wedding anniversary. I'm taking off an entire, um, a week and a half. I don't work Fridays and I do not, I have at least a four day weekend every single month. So yeah, I'm doing all the things, but doesn't mean I'm not having this amazing work-life balance. So the very first thing that I did when I started my company was I understood that not every single thing I do has the same return. So the 20, 80 rule is real. 20% of the things you do gets an 80% return. 80% of things you do only gets a 20% return. So I really thought about what are these things that are going to help me? One, I needed to get leads, right? Two, to be able to convert. So I decided on day one that the very first thing I wanted to do was start a podcast, which is what you have here. And it's absolutely amazing. The podcast has been so beneficial because you really have something to offer to people. So in conversations that you're meeting people, you ask them to be your guest and they experience you. And when you give, you're allowed to receive. When people will have you on your podcast, you're just on mine. We're promoting it to our whole email list. We are promoting in front of our things. You'll probably do that here. It's an amazing way to get in front of other people, but also why it's so amazing is because I love to, you know, dedicate certain podcasts to my listeners. I like to handpick them and say, oh, this is what you need. I have the actual resource for you. So it creates that customized experience. And that's really what it comes down to. And this is what people forget online. This is where you're always going to get your biggest return when it comes to sales. It's emotional connection. People forget that this is called social media. Like we're allowed to connect and DM. 
I have connection calls all week long. I, like I said, best friends all over the world because of these cell phones. It's amazing. I have made millions of dollars literally from this box that fits in my back pocket. It's like blows my mind. It's never been easier to sell. And again, selling's not spammy, scammy, sleazy. Get over that. It's, it's sexy. It's spiritual. It's somebody's solution. So the number one thing that I realized is I'm going to get my biggest return is connecting to people. So I did whatever I can to get really clear on what it is. And by the way, I've changed completely what my branding was and who I was in the beginning because I was making it up as I went. <laughs> I got fired. I was like, all right, I'm going to come up with something. No programs, no testimonials, nothing. And I just came and connected with people. It's so important not to talk about what you think people want. Talk about what you know people want. And how do you know that other than connecting? Like, trust, know is a real thing. So um, every day I made sure to connect to people. Every day I looked for the biggest return. Every day, I didn't show up as a scared girl who had no idea what she was doing, even though that's how I felt. I just acted like the woman who was a multi seven figure company and people felt it. They knew it. You wouldn't believe the circles I was able to get into and the connections that I made. It just blows my freaking mind. So that's really how it got started in the beginning. Just think bigger, think full picture, not day to day, but how do I get the biggest return? Got it. I love that. And so for you, you were leveraging both your podcast and the combination of doing connection calls, you know, with your network and expanding your network to be able to generate leads. Essentially, you're also getting in front of other people's audiences, right? Mm -hmm. By being able to be a guest. So more people find about, find out about you that way. So I think that's brilliant. So after you begin this momentum, right, by connecting with other people, what were some of the other strategies that you utilized to be able to create uh, a six figure so quickly? Because, you know, one of the things we talk about here on Breadwinning Women is that it's very important that women cross that six figure mark like essentially it's the starting point right like everyone wants six figures at first yeah it's the starting point because at six figures you're now at a place where you can actually pay yourself a sustainable salary you can uh get that first person on board on your team that can support you it's the it's like the starting line right like of you know going to the next level but ultimately if maybe you don't want to have like a you know a, 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 a seven figure business like we do but perhaps right you do want to be able to support your family or be able to make a living that supports yourself it's the starting lineup you know in business and so I think that there's this perception that it takes a really long time to create six figures or multiple six figures in revenue. And when I left corporate, um, I was able to do it in six months, right? You were able to do it in four months. And so I really want people to understand. And I love what you said. You thought about like, what are the real things that I need to do? And I think a combination of thinking about that and also using the energetics allows you to really collapse the amount of time, right? That you're able to create that kind of result. So I'd love to hear what are some of the other um, actions that you took? Like I know, for example, you um, do enrollment events, right? Like that's been a a important strategy for you to be able to um, call in your right people as well. So what were some of the other key things in addition to getting in front of other people's audience and launching your podcast? So for me, um, I think I'm, I'm really blessed because I used to work again for a business consultant where we did a ton of launching and I was the one responsible for and managing $2 million plus launch. I ran the teams. I, and then I actually taught like seven and eight figure entrepreneurs on how to do it as well. Now I certainly have not got those results. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not getting 40, 50 people at a time yet, but when you get four and then you get four again and you get four again, I was always four for me. And then five, <laughs> six, you turn around and you're like, oh, it's only four months and I have 20 clients. So for me, I really believe if you do not quit, you will not fail. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm, I love selling because again, selling to me is serving. Selling to me is me doing my purpose to really connect with somebody and support them in their journey. And so, yeah, I do do conversion. I said, do, do, I do do (laughs) conversion (laughs) every single uh, month. And these are not, you know, these are masterclasses. These are workshops. This is 10 years of my education in college and medical studies, working with 
Reiki masters and tutor practitioners, some of the top business consultants in the world. Um, I put a lot of my energy into it. But for me, it's so fun because I'm coaching. I'm a teacher. I love teaching. And something that I think is really important, and I will always live by this, is that I always give away all my best stuff. A lot of people are like, no, that's too much. Like my coaches that a lot of times are like, that's too much, way too much. You did it. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's what I want to do. And I even leave them up so you can watch them later because when you're ready, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And when I have my resource there and you're like, whoa, this is what I get for free. Imagine what it's like when I actually pay, it's going to be even more and bigger and better. I promise. So this is what I get for complimentary. Like just imagine. So I constantly am coming and thinking to myself, what are my listeners wanting? Let me connect with them and actually talk to them as individuals, not just random numbers. Let me see what they want. Who's, you know, being consistent and showing up in our community. How do I support them? And then I really think to myself, I have a strong relationship with whether you call it universe or God. And I just say, what is, you know, seeking to come to me and through me? How do I use my voice and use this platform to serve as many people as possible? And whatever comes, I just talk about it and I do it over and over. So I don't do the same conversion event over and over and over and over. I give, because I feel like when I do that, it sounds scripted. Um, I don't like sounding like a robot. I like to really channel when I, when I go live and then support people. And I want to help them with what they want focus on now. So I'm customizing each time. For me, it's fun. Plus it adds a huge portfolio of libraries. So even when you just click, 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 you're not there live, you see months later, wow, this is the person that really is gonna help support me. So I am very much into launching 100%. If you can't, you cannot receive unless you ask. And again, I don't pitch to people. That's really important. When I'm doing this, it's not a pitch. It's I am serving and I'm inviting people to plug into my power. I'm inviting people to come into my container, into my world. And so I invite every single month. I invite, invite, invite. And I'm here with open arms for the woman who is truly ready to get it done and to see it through. Um, the other thing is, and I, I touched it a little bit, but the, I really do believe the difference between having, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars cash months, and then going up to seventy thousand um, in my eighth month, and and you know, every month repeatedly doing that, is I really decided to focus on my ninety-five percent of me. Five percent is conscious, ninety-five percent is subconscious. I like to even say that that's five percent human, ninety-five percent spirit. So I realized that I don't even understand. 95% of how my mind works. So instead of trying to figure out how, I decided to just work with it. So every single day, I invite God into my business. I, every single day before I meet with my team, I have a business meeting with God. And I say, if I'm going to do your work and if I'm going to help as many women as possible to change their lives, I also, I'm giving so much myself, I'd like to receive a lifestyle that really supports me to be able to maintain the quality that I'm putting out there. If I'm just giving all my best stuff all the time and nobody's ever coming back and finding me, <clears throat> I don't know how long I'll be able to do this. And this is what I decided and promised you I would do. So can I please be supported? I believe I'm supported mentally, spiritually, financially, energetically, entirely by God, universe, again, whatever you want to label. So I say it's five o'clock, your shift go take over. I say, I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm just going to show up as the best version of me doing the things in alignment. And I know you're going to take care of it. Let me stop worrying about the how, because every time I do, I actually create resistance and all these possibilities are waiting to merge, but I am having focus just right here. So I'm, instead of going from, you know, you're doing A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, I discovered if I just give it up and just do my best part, I can go from A to H to Z. And so that's been the thing from going like 30 to 70 is huge. And then doing it over and over and over again, I do a lot less work. I just do the things that I know I'm best at and I give it up. And for a lot of people, that's like, that's too out there. That's crazy. That's fine. How's it working for you? you know? <laughs> like, I've been where you were at and I hated it. I miss kids' birthdays. I've literally like, remember just like hating my life, just working all the time, having blisters on my fingers from like typing so much. I, it's not like that anymore. So it, it's worked. And so it is a lot of the practical, yes, I'm doing the things I'm selling, I'm, I'm going live. I'm, you know, creating content. I am helping and serving, connecting, doing all of those things, but I enjoy those things. First of all, the other things are I'm really being supported by the universe. And I believe that that is a huge part of my success. And what I like to teach my clients is learning to surrender. Yeah. So that's what, listen, learning to surrender. That's a big one. Yeah. I want to, yeah, that's so critical. I love that you said that. So what comes to mind for me, Cynthia, is 
what do we do when the doubt creeps in? Mm -hmm. Right? So, so we are, right? Spiritual woman, we know that there is a bigger power than us, right? That's God who is at work for us on our behalf, making things happen. We don't get ideas, goals, and dreams like out of nowhere. They were planted in us because we right. have the capability to make it happen. Yes. But even we know that like intellectually and still there's that doubt that can creep in. And I'm curious about like, what's a practice that you have for being able to like deal with that doubt you know, when she shows up, because you're like, this isn't my inner feminine beast, right? This is my lower self, right? <laughs> Who's afraid, right? Trying to, you know, warn me and protect me and all of that stuff. And what do you do to manage that? I don't know why, but my eyes almost feel like teary when I hear you talking. Like, I don't know, like, I just feel so called to share this with women. This is like my purpose is talking about this right here. So I am a big saleswoman. So whether you hate him or love him, I can understand why I do love him. I'm a big Grant Cardone fan and he has a book and, and in the, one of the chapters it's called feed the beast. And this has been like, I love his book 10 X. I oh, yeah. loved it. So, yeah. Um, one of the hugest things that has inspired me and my brand is like, he talks about feeding the beast, feeding the beast. And my brand is inner feminine beast because I used to listen to him and I'm like, yeah, I'm very much like this, but I'm also very much in my feminine. So I'm like the feminine beast. And like, that's where I came from. But you said something that was so perfect. And that's why I got teary eyed is you said, you know, yes, we are entrepreneurs. Yes, we are business women. Um, and yes, we know that we're spiritual people and we know that we're supported by God. You said the word, no, I like caught that. And that's when I was like, Ooh, she said, no, because it's not about believing. A lot of times people say, yes, I believe in being supported by the universe. Yes, I believe in being supported by God. I believe, I believe. To me, I say, screw believing. A belief is just a thought that you think over and over again. Do you know? Do you know? Can you be a woman that stands up and everybody's faith is different. But for me, I can stand on top of a rooftop and scream. I know that I'm supported by God. I really know that. So if I do know that with unshakable knowingness, not faith, but knowingness, why would I ever doubt myself? Why would I ever challenge myself? If I believe that I'm a child of God, I'm a goddess, I'm divine. I literally am made in the image of the creator. I'm here to like create a ripple effect that leaves a legacy and such a huge impact. Why would I ever doubt myself and play small? Even if I fail, like it doesn't matter because failure is your biggest teacher. And that's what successful people understand is that every time you, you fail, like you learn so much more. That's how you get better. So yeah. I'm not afraid of failing. In fact, I fail all the time. And when you work with me as my client, I celebrate when you fail because it means you, you did something. You did something. Yeah. So I would say that no. Nelson Mandela quote is winning or learning, period. That's it. There's like you either win or you learn from whatever yeah. you didn't work out. One of my favorites is Michael Jordan. I don't have it word for word, but he's like, I literally missed 300 shots. I had the game winning shot be mine. I missed it 200 times. There's so many times I got this wrong and I got that wrong. And he says, I love it. Cause he says over and over and over again, I have failed. And that is why I succeed. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why all the kids want to be like Mike, right? He's the yeah. best. <laughs> it's like, he's failing. So it's about knowing, knowing. I ask myself all the time, how strong is my faith? Is it strong enough that I know? And if so, why am I acting like this? Because we, you, so many people, if you ask them, do you know there's God? Do you know you're supported? They're like, oh yes, 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 yes. I'm like, that's wonderful. Then why are you acting as a woman who does not know that? Why are you not waiting to do the thing? Why are you comparing yourself to others? Why are you saying that you need to wait for divine timing? I believe I'm divine. So I call the time. That's what divine timing is, right? It's like really understanding that it, do you know? And so sometimes I forget. And so here's the funny part. I've thought about it so many times, but I do not have tattoo. I, I've thought about it. I'm just, I'm freaking out. I might not like it later and want to get it. Okay. I'm not against tattoos. I think they're great, but I very often wear jewelry that says beast on it. Right. I like, I put beast on there. And again, interphone of beast isn't just something to sound cute. It's really the essence of who I am. It's the essence of my soul. And so when I put beasts on there and I feel the fear coming over, I, I realize like, it's just my reminder, like, look down beast. Do you know? Oh yeah, I do know. And I started realizing too, 
<clears throat> that what is the difference between feeling excited and feeling scared? It's literally the same exact feeling. And just as we were saying before, how do you want to label it? Do you want to say, I don't you know, want to be late or I enjoy being on time? So instead of saying that I'm afraid all the time, I just started saying I'm really excited because it, the butterflies, the, the, the red blotchiness, like, which I probably have here right now, see, it happens. Like <laughs> I get all sweaty and like right now I, I'm excited. That's what I say. I've convinced myself to say I'm excited. I've had, I've trained my brain to teach myself that the feeling of fear is the feeling of growth. And so if I, people come to me and my clients will say, this is like what I'm talking about. It's pretty cool. I've had women come to me and say, Cynthia, I want to work with you one-on-one. Um, I really want to write a book. I've been wanting to do it for like 10 years. Do you think we can do it in six months? We did in six weeks, right? I've had women who are like, Hey, I want to quit my job. And like, I want to move across the country and start a whole new company. Like, do you think we can do it in six months? We did in four weeks, like literally packed up the whole house. But like, you can do all these things. It's just focus. And it's really understanding that you must know that you're supported. So that's really <laughs> the thing behind it is ask yourself, do you know, and do things around yourself all the time to remind you. And honestly, here's the thing too. And you and I've talked about this. I have such a strong sense of self accountability, self-discipline, self-integrity, responsibility, but I would never be the woman I am today. If I didn't surround myself by other people who are living the life I want to live and holding me accountable to it. I invest heavy in my mentors and I'm, I, I trust in my intuition on who I choose but I always have somebody holding a high standard for me because I, as a leader need to lead by example for others and leaders need support too. Like yeah. the more successful you become, the more support you need because you're holding the responsibility of so many other people's dreams, wishes, you know, investments, like all these things, like you need that support and that's part of it too. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like hundred percent resonate with that. And I was just thinking about, I was but before we jumped on, I was like doing a mental calculation of how much I've invested in myself over the last 12, 12. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, Jay, you went all in, right? But this is the, like, I'm my best investment. I can't, the, like the results that I create, right? By investing in myself, I can't get on the stock market. I can't get, there's nothing else. There's no other investment strategy, right? Even real estate has amazing returns. I can't create what I can create by investing in my mind, even by, you know, being a real estate investor. Like it's a exponential returns and, it, and it's with you forever. It's the same way you built your sales skills, right? And, and being able to create, you know, uh, multi seven figure sales results you're applying that into your business now. Like no one can ever take that away from you. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we're afraid to right, like really make those bigger investments and step up in a higher way, but it's the difference of everything. It you is the that. Well, you know what? So it's funny about money. Joey and I, my Joey's my husband, we were talking about it not too long ago. He's like, it's interesting, but like how often we pay anything in cash? He's like, we don't pay your mortgage in cash. Your clients that you have this, you know, multi six year company that you started just this year, and none of your clients are paying you in cash. It's like this digital ding, 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 you know, it's yeah. just digital. But like we put all this weight onto this, this thing, like it's a, a tangible thing. It's, it truly is energy. We've heard about that all the time, but energy, uh, I mean, money is a currency. And when you understand and how things work in energetic form, that they work with the laws of the universe. So the law of rhythm, it must go out in order to come in. The tides go out, the tides come in. The seasons, they change. The uh, the moon, they go through the phases. As women, we go through our cycles. Like things have to move or they become stagnant. When something becomes stagnant, it becomes toxic. When it becomes toxic, it dies. You can't hold it, you can't hoard it. You have to move it. But then there's the law of cause and effect, which means I go first, everything responds. Now you could be an effect of somebody's cause, but that's not me or you. We're going to get cause that creates that effect. So I understand that my intention will go out and it will be met. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so it's really, um, it almost always happens. The people that are sometimes nervous to invest into our coaching, they're usually the ones as soon as they do it, get like two, three clients out of the blue. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> out of the blue. Nothing's coincidence. This is all consciousness. Everything's mathematically like 
perfect. So you went and you decided to get an effect. You want to create change. You have to like be the change, be the change you wish to see. You want to get something radically different in your life, do something radically different. Aligned action gets you aligned results. Everything's a mirror and that's law of correspondence as within, so without. So it's like, once you learn all these universal concepts, you learn, understand how to do your business. You understand what actually works. You understand what you're wasting your time on. And that's why it's interesting, but, um, being a metaphysical woman, 100% has helped me to become the successful woman that I am. And I remember when I first started studying this, that not that it's a bad thing, but everywhere I'd go to like talk about these concepts, you know, the women would have like purple hair and tattoos and nose rings. And like, I was like, why don't they look like me? I think that's why a lot of like executive corporate women and these entrepreneurs who used to be corporate women really find me attractive is because they're like, oh, I can see like her being a mom, like literally like, you know, running the meetings that I was part of. I can, if it works for her, it works for me. And that's what I think I want to be. It's just more approachable. A lot of women coming out of this, uh, we call it the spiritual closet. <laughs> that's like what it's about. It's introducing these concepts so that they can get to that next level. Yeah, that's wonderful, Cynthia. I was, it's been amazing talking to you. And I, oh, and I yeah, and I, and I really um, believe that, you know, the person listening to this today, right, understands in a better way if they didn't already, how it's really important not to just think about strategy, right? That's all good, right? You know, I'm all about the strategy, but how do you really tap into that inner knowing, getting aligned and, and, and not just believing. I love what you said, not just believing, but wholeheartedly like embodying the knowing that yeah. you, everything that you desire is there. Like yeah. it's already there, it's already created. And you literally just need to get in alignment with, change the channel and get in alignment with what is possible in your life. So Cynthia, how can more people, um find out about your work and be able to connect with you yeah sure so i'm actually really big on facebook i mean i'm everywhere but i'm always in my dm so you can find me on facebook cynthia stant and then also i do have my facebook community where we're constantly offering um weekly teachings on these subjects we have um these are our workshops and master classes if they're not hosted there that's where you'll be notified and that's called the spiritual success sorority Facebook group. And like I said, I really screwed myself in the beginning with all this alliteration. But I did a good job, didn't I? I can say it right now. Spiritual Success Sorority Facebook group is where you can find me. So definitely when you come in, let me know you um, found us through Jamila and uh, we'll make sure to give her a shout out. Awesome. We'll make sure to link up to the Spiritual Success Sorority and the show notes so that you can go over and check out Cynthia's group and learn more about her work and really start to get in alignment with your goals. If you're not feeling that already, now is the time to do it. So thank you so much, Cynthia, for joining me today. This has been amazing. Absolute pleasure. Thank you.